okay the commentary streams affect your sub count um you know i'll talk about i'll talk about that 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 a little bit let me stop the music for a second i'll just talk about that very briefly um so I, I will talk about the stream counts. So I'm, I'm going to give you guys a, 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 an idea into, into the future that I foresee going forward in, in terms of streaming. You're, you're right that in the short term, I'm making a sacrifice um, in regards to the, the subs. Because obviously when I do the streaming, there are less subs. I can't thank everybody um, as, 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 as much as I would like to. So I, I understand that part of it. Um, but, but what I would say in general is that down the road as I see a future, I see myself doing more of this commentary, doing uh, more commentary on events, and then also commentary when, uh, when I'm playing. So when I think about the future involving commentary, the goal long term is if I do the commentary, and it's a proven concept, that there, that there will be potential to have actual sponsors who will sponsor the channel and sponsor some of these events down the road. So yes, what I'm sacrificing in the short term, sure i could be like oh well look my sub count is down you know and, and so forth um but what, what i think at the end of the day is that if that were if i can actually push that and that can become a, a legitimate legitimate thing and there are sponsors that not only benefit the channel not only should it benefit me but it means that also people who do um who do the uh who do the commentary they'll also get paid as well so everybody's going to get something out of it. there's going to be it will be beneficial to everybody so that's the main thing behind it as far as I see it, is that it's trying to build a concept that down the road, long term, there will be uh, there will be benefits for everybody. Um, so that's what I will talk about uh, specifically. Um, is that it's not just you know it's not yes yeah, sub numbers matter, um, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to make it um if, if you're trying to make something legitimate, something that's lasting, um, you you want you you want to um one second I go check number two. Uh, that that's the reason. So in the short term, yes, I'm making a sacrifice. But I would argue that in the long term, uh, I think why I do that. But I would argue in the long term um, that it's something that I'm trying to do to, to help grow, grow the channel and help grow chess. Um, uh, so, so let's go here. Let's take and go queen h7. I will take. I will go check in h5. That's the puzzle rush. It's a really beautiful double, um, double, double. Um, and yes, of course, it's also normal for subs to go down after a big boom as well. That's the other obvious point. Um, but again, I, it's like I've said before, and I'll say it again. It's not a competition. Um, let me go here. Let me go one second. Let's see. Actually, let me put the music back. Um, it's not a competition. Every everybody's gonna everybody's gonna have their um, everybody's gonna have their success. Say you kingpin for the two months. Like I, I really I really feel that when I look at um like for example, there are plenty of people who say something to me like, oh well, look the chess bros have so many more, more subs than you. Like you know ridiculous blah 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 like i don't really care about that that's not the point the fact is if everyone's doing what they're doing everyone's everyone's gonna everyone's having success and at the end of the day that's what it's about like yes i would like to do well also but if the category as a whole is growing that's um that 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 at the end of the day i think is what really does um uh does matter so i think i can play d5 and go a4 a5 and a6 let's just go check frick bad okay let me just start over this has been a pretty scuffed run so let's do another um <laughs> eric and i'm on star chess on twitch so it's naturally more um the, what i will say about the chess bras one thing specifically in regards to them though is you will notice they have some extremely generous donors um you'll notice that the viewer counts on the channels and this isn't to start talking like devin or something but you will notice that the viewer counts on their channel are significantly lower in terms of their sub number relative to the viewers they have something like 10 to 1 ratio of subs to viewership, um, which shows that they have a lot of donors who are extremely generous. Um, if you look at my channel or you look at Botez's channel, you'll see that the, the correlation of the viewers to the subs is significantly different um, in terms of that. Let's go queen d3 and go queen f3. Just checkmate. Then knight f6 and queen g8. Oh, it's more like 20 to 1. I don't know what it is. But, but again, this is the point. So like i could very easily i could be like really annoyed it's like okay somebody has more subs than me like in a given month even botez might have more subs than me like but it, but that's not really the point the point is you can't you can't really like you can't worry about those sorts of things which is why like when i see the stuff that involves chess 24 it's really silly because the fact is everybody is going to get their slice of the pie it's not going to it's not going to be something where um it's not going to be something where one person wins and takes everything and everybody else loses so that's kind of that's kind of the point that I would say um, in general is that like everybody is going to get a piece of the pie. 
And so, so when it comes to Twitch and like, you know, Botez, Chess Bras, all the channels, even Gotham, even Gotham Chess. Look at Levy. He, he streams day in, day out. Puts in like many, many hours. And um, Levy is close to 4,000 subs. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of Levy for, for the streaming that he's done. Um, you know, every day he shows up, puts in the work. He, he was very involved with like the, the layout and all this other stuff. So um, everybody gets a piece of the pie. And so this notion that you have to be like angry or bitter, um, it really, it really is like, I mean, I, it, it bothers me. It really does. Um, uh, and that's why I like all the stuff involving Chess 24, honestly, like it, it really grosses me out. Uh, because like everybody should, everybody's getting a piece of the pie. Um, so, so that's just my, my little bit go here let's go queen a2 um i go check and rook d1 and i take the rook here go e5 and e4 take good check and queen h6 i guess i just take check take the rook um i think i just take check take the rook good check check and i win um rook d3 is good make the queen here i think queen h3 check and eight is good um takes and rook e8 is also good I'm a bitter because I didn't make it to the final. Wait, who's bitter? I'm not bitter about anything. I I'm definitely not bitter. Um, and this is not the final, by the way. Um, is the website faster than usual? So big shout out to the mo uh, not mods, sorry. Big shout out to the devs who uh, actually updated the puzzle rush because before there used to be some lag issues um, where it wouldn't load quickly, but the devs actually fixed. It. So yeah, the site does not have any hiccups now with the puzzle rush. Um, so big shout out to the devs for uh, for fixing it. Now I go check and take the bishop. Just take and take and rook f8. Uh, they want a bigger. They want a bigger piece of capitalist. I mean, look, like I, I, I understand you want to be successful. I get that, but, um, but chess is already not the biggest. Uh, chess is not the biggest market out there. It's not. It's not some huge market. Um, it's not like some. You know, there isn't like you know some five billion market cap. You know, of 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 uh, of revenue or something that you capture share of. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. Go queen f3. I can just take and go check and take the rook. I think I just take and go queen a3. I think I go 95. I don't think I've ever seen a highlighted comic get read out. Occasionally I do, not all, all that, not all, not all that often, um, but sometimes. Go 95 and just take the bishop, take the knight. Go check and queen h8. Wait a sec, what? Here, 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 and there's checkmate or rook. Check the mate. Um, take, check, take the rook, take the queen here. Thank you to Umami Beat for the four months. Thank you to Luki Legend for the prime. Thank you to Kingpin for the two months. Vixers for the five. Uh, thank Humpdump for the prime. Thank Valentinian for the two months. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just my take on all of this. And I, I don't know, you don't have to, um, um, like, let's go here and here. Um, I just take, that's just my outlook in general, you guys. So, um, sub counts come and go again. You, you just try to do what you can do if people like it They like it if they don't like it then you have to change um, but I'm not I'm not worried about those things right now Okay, so if I go here, there's Bishop G2. So I guess I go to E2 take and make a mate um, Queen H5 and Rook F6 is fine here Let's Go here. Oh, it's just Bishop E8. Oh my gosh. It's not Knight F6, Rook F6 takes Bishop F6, but that was so so stupid of me. Mucho stupido. Let's take and take the Rook um, I can take or go queen b2 here. Hey, Hikaru and your team. I'm glad your approach aligns with why I subscribe. Um, uh, the long game is much, much more important, much more rewarding in the short term. Okay, you know what? I actually, you know what, guys? I'll still do the puzzle rush, but I'm be very slow. It's going to turn into more of a, just a general topic about chess. I'll give you some of my thoughts because there are going to be some announcements coming forward in the near future. Um, I won't talk about them specifically right now, but... Since there are going to be announcements, I'll just take this time to talk about my outlook in general. Um, so, uh, just chatting, right? No, I'm I'm going to stay in chess, you guys. Uh, chess, chess is what made. Chess is what made. I I will stay in the chess category. Um, you can go knight f7 and queen here. Um, let's go check and take. Let's make a rook here. Um, okay. So here's here's what here's what here's what I'm gonna say um in, in general is that uh where's I going? Where is I going with my thought process? I just lost the thought. Um uh What was I gonna say? 
Yeah, well, okay, Ch chess base does this too. I'm actually giving a lesson on Tuesday morning to uh, Loya, the very, very prominent Fortnite streamer. I'll be doing that on Tuesday. Um, no, I'm not, not an announcement, but in general, what I'm saying is I feel that, um, you know, chess is something, if we look historically, and I think Ludwig talked about this a little bit. I, now I remember my thought. Um, Ludwig talked about this, you know, chess has had many busts and booms, even in my life cycle. So when I look at the game of chess, there have been many prominent sponsors for stars who have, who have come along. Um, Whoa, thank you to Gotham Chess for the host with 637 viewers. Thank you so much. Big shout out to Gotham Chess again. As I was saying, I'm very proud of Levy. He streams every day. He, he really puts his heart and soul into streaming. Um, he's doing a lot. Uh, he's obviously a fantastic chess player. Great commentator. All around funny guy. Um, big shout out to Levy. Oh, sorry. I'll stop the music. Yeah. So when I look at chess historically, I'll, I'll, get, I'll start with my own life. Not even my own lifetime, but just stories I've heard even before um, uh, from people before my generation. Um, so when I look at chess, a lot of people will talk about the various booms. You'll talk about the boom in 19, uh, 1972 when, when Bobby Fischer played played uh, Boris Spassky for the World Championship match. So there was a very big boom of chess during that time period um, where a lot of people started playing chess because they saw Bobby win the World Championship match, uh, defeat the Soviets, and so forth. Um, so there was, there was that event, that, that, that sort of event um, in history, which was very unique because that, that brought chess to the mass in a way that never had occurred before. Thank you. Thank you to Con Color for the Prime and Tyler DW for the Prime as well. So that was like the first big boom um, in the last like 50 years. So if we, if we go back um, to that, that really changed the course. But then after 72, do I remember? I remember I wasn't there. But again, you have to realize that I've grown up in the chess world and there are a lot of people that I've competed against over years. I think of former US champions like, you know, Larry Christensen, Joel Benjamin, Nick DeFermi. And these are guys that I had a lot of interactions with when I was like 14, 15 and up and coming. Now, these guys obviously are retired. They teach or they're not involved in chess anymore. But I have had interactions with these guys because these were the guys I was competing against. These were the colleagues, the people I played against when I was much younger. So, um, so a lot of my background is from these sorts of stories that I've heard from these people. Um, and so, like, you look at the Bobby Fischer boom, there was that. And that, that kind of died out because Bobby Fischer obviously stopped playing um, right away. And he, he stopped, um, I mean, the, the boom died. So now let's fast forward. Let's go ahead to 19, I think it was 1978 or 1979. Um, Chess is not a U.S. exclusive game. This is correct, Kidder. But I'm talking about the booms in the U.S. Because that's what I'm most familiar with um, specifically. So I'm not trying to exclude the rest of the world. But I'm just looking at it from a from an NA perspective. And that's not like trying to say chess and NA is better or whatever, but I'm only talking because this is my experience. Um, so if I go forward from there, um, I think a big wheezy for the prime. So if I go forward in 78, 79, there was a, there was a very prominent sponsor. I don't know who it was, but there was this tournament in Lone Pine, California, which featured a lot of the best players. I think Boris Spassky even played um, along with several, several other, I, maybe Carrot. No, that's too late. It wasn't Carrot, but there were a lot of strong chess players who played, um, who played in that event. Uh, and that was an event that was like three years. It was in Lone Pine, California. Those of you who are familiar with California geography know that Lone Pine is literally in the middle of the desert. I mean, it's just like a, you know, just the dead town, basically. And um, and, and so, like, there was just a couple of years there was a prominent sponsor there. And then that kind of faded out after three years. And then there really wasn't much happening with U.S. Chess, I would say, um, in terms of sponsor or prominent events until the, uh, until the early 2000s when there was uh, America's Foundation for Chess and eric anderson specifically who who came came along and they started sponsoring events a, a big shout out by the way to yasser as well yasser was very instrumental because they, they were based in seattle yasser was very instrumental in terms of bringing that together um so basically like th they came along in the early 2000s they, they did a lot of stuff they held the u.s championship u.s women's championship they had a lot of classic programs which they still do from time to time um and and they were around for probably I would say about five years or so they did the u.s championship they also had u.s china matches of uh, these summit matches which which i played one in seattle i also played one in uh shanghai as well so like in the early 2000s there was america foundation for chess and that kind of bailed out that that sort of fizzled i'm not going to get into the reasons but that kind of fizzled and then around 2009 about four, three to four years later uh, of course rex singfield and st louis came along and they of course are still very much involved in chess but every boom that i've seen um has sort of come and gone and so my attitude i'm not going to get into the reason so in terms of in terms of my outlook i feel that the assumption um and i'm going to use the i'm going to use the of course the famous santa it's george santayana i think you said the quote which is uh something like if we don't if we don't remember if we don't remember the past we're doomed to repeat it in the future or something i i know i don't have it down 
uh, hold. But it's something like, if we, if we don't remember the path, we're doomed to repeat it in the future. Um, uh, someone in chat can tell me the exact quote uh, while I'm at it. Um, now, that's, that's, that's actually a quote that I've generally looked at in reference to the stock market, not in reference not in reference to uh, to chess, but when, when, when you look at when you look at chess and you look at what happened in the past um, and, and like going forward, my attitude is kind of like the short term is not really what I should be focusing on. Yes, I want to be successful on Twitch. Yes, I want to I, I want to do things that uh, will benefit me. But at the same time, I feel like the what I should be focused on most is if there is a chance where there is a boom occurring again, even if it's on Twitch, a slightly different medium, slightly different um, thing. Uh, if you don't remember blockchain, you're doomed to repeat. Yeah, uh, but basically that the long term is what happens. I have a chance, kind of. There is this boom going on, and I feel like I'm in a position where I should do everything I can to keep chess popular, make it more popular, grow chess as a whole. Um, and I think in the in the long term, that is slightly more important than a, than the personal benefits that I can get, um, you know, from from certain things. Specifically. So that's my general general take on things. You can agree with it, you can disagree with it. But I do feel that when you're in that position, um, uh, those who repeat, those who those who uh, repeat, doomed our history. Yeah, I, I I mean I can find the quote. I'll, I'll find the quote. Give me one second. Let me literally pull it up. Um, uh, history um, Yeah, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat. That's what it. Yeah, those who who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. So basically, that's kind of the point that I make is. Um, is you want to try you, you want to try and, and do what you can i'm 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 mature now i mean yeah i had my fun wild days when i was when i was a teen but those days are long gone so um but yeah so that's that's what i'm gonna say now i'm gonna finish up the puzzle rush here i guess it's um i don't know if it's king f5 king six or it's 94 here it could be king f3 or it's it's white to move white pawns go up black pawns go down um let's see so king h3 maybe here king f5 strange all right this is white to move and somehow not lose a queen e5 or q2 just takes this is good here um let's think for a second queen e5 or q2 king g3 is fine um oh is bishop e oh of course it's bishop four tier list we will be doing very shortly once i get this third puzzle wrong I must be blind today because I literally don't see what the it's got. I literally don't. Or, oh no, the, the bishop. Wait, if I take here, here. I think he just takes me go here. Okay. And that's okay. Um, yeah, back on for a bit. Okay, so there's queen e5. Obviously, if you take, I have queen h1. I have bishop e3. I have bishop g5 here. I guess you just take and take. Okay. Um, so I can take this. I can also go like knight e4. Queen h3 is a move as well. Um, score 50. Yeah, let's get to 50 before we do the tier list um, on this one. If I get the third one wrong, I'll stop um, until then. Um, let's see, knight e7, bishop g5. I mean, there's rook d1 here, but that doesn't... No, I think I just take and go here and take knight. That's good. Okay, so obviously I have multi-check. Wait, which check is it? This one's wrong. This one, this one, this one. Okay, wait. So check here. Check. That's got to be check. No. All right, you guys. Um, I am going to take a very short break, and then we are going to do the tier list. So I'm just going to take a short break, everybody, and um, I'll be back. I'll be back in a second, and then um, then we will uh, we'll do the careless with Levy Rosman. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 